All right, it's that time. It's Weather for Weather Geeks time here on this Thursday evening. You know, we had somewhat of a surprise Wednesday evening. Was not expecting the extent of the heavy gusty storms that we had Wednesday evening. We had some scattered wind damage, some scattered power outages as well. Thankfully on this Thursday evening, it is quite a bit quieter. It may not stay that way through all of Friday though. Let's get right to it to this evening. And I wanted to start out showing where we've been temperature wise so far in 2023 compared to the average. Of course, we had an exceptionally warm winter, so January and February were way above average. The spring started on a pretty mild note as well, a little bit above average in March and a few degrees, a couple of degrees at least, above average in terms of temperatures in April. But then we had a couple of months in a row. For the first time in a few years, we had back-to-back -back months with below average temperatures. That was May and that was June. July thus far has been about 0.8 degrees uh, warmer than the average, and that number will probably expand some as uh, we go through the last several days of the month and of course the hottest days of the year or the hottest day i should say of the year is coming our way on friday precipitation wise at the youngstown or an airport uh plentiful rains compared to where we were earlier in the summer and during the late spring the uh, total at the airport now up to 5.56 inches uh, and that's 1.83 inches above the average and again we saw some uh, couple of rounds of rain over the last 24 hours one last evening and another overnight last night that being said the long-term situation across our area is still a little bit drier than the average at least at the airport we're still in a moderate drought designation uh, with today's update from the drought monitor across western Mahoning County western Columbiana County and uh, parts of Mercer County as well you'll notice how things have changed over the last few weeks we've seen more plentiful rains in Trumbull County parts of Mercer County and uh, across southeastern Columbiana County as well whereas it's remained fairly dry compared to the average in places like Sebring and Beloit and Hanoverton and up towards Austintown and uh, Craig Beach as well. So that was today's update from the drought monitor. The other numbers at the airport today, temperatures underachieved a little bit. We expected upper 80s today, but we stopped at 85 this afternoon. A little subtle boundary, a little cool front slid in from the north, and that actually made for a little bit of a more comfortable afternoon in our northern viewing area especially northern Trumbull, northern Mercer, wasn't much higher than the lower 80s today, while down towards East Liverpool in southern Columbiana County, we were in the upper 80s with heat index values well above that earlier on today. Records today 47 on the low side, that sounds pretty nice, and 97 degrees, the record high back in 1941. So the heat index at the airport today never got really out of control, uh, generally middle and upper 80s, a couple of degrees higher than the air temperature for a lot of the afternoon the dew points no fun today upper 60s to around 70 degrees and of course things are about to change for the worse uh, unless you really like hot weather as we go into the day on friday radar pretty quiet this evening we had a couple of showers and storms earlier on down near pittsburgh and closer to the i-70 corridor the uh, national weather service in the middle of the night last night did hoist a heat advisory for all of ohio and a good chunk of western pa as well uh, this is an excessive heat warning for the greater Cincinnati area. Also, excessive heat warnings are in effect for a good chunk of Illinois out into eastern parts of Iowa. The uh, criteria for a heat advisory in most of our area is at least a couple of hours with heat index values at or above 100. And we do expect that coming up on Friday with the heat index taking off rapidly in the morning and probably peaking mid-afternoon into the... Uh, upper 90s, lower 100s, you know, it's just going to be a blistering day and uh, pretty easily the most uncomfortable day of 2023 th thus far and probably for the, it'll end up being the most uncomfortable day for the year as a whole because I don't think August will be particularly hot. All right, severe weather risk. Uh, today uh, we've seen increasing chances on some of the modeling for some gusty late day thunderstorms on our Fridays. A couple of disturbances move through the lower Great Lakes. Now there's not a great trigger necessarily other than a couple of subtle uh, little little disturbances aloft there's not a front coming through there's not a distinct trough of low pressure kind of like we had yesterday um, coming through but that being said the atmosphere is gonna be super unstable tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening a little bit of wind energy aloft as well and with the midday update today the storm prediction center did hoist a, a slight risk level two uh, for northern Ohio and northwest PA. It's not a certainty we're going to have severe weather late in the day tomorrow, but it's a possibility, and I think the main window is between 6 and 9 p.m. All hazards on the table. Any storm that manages to get up on its feet could bring some wind damage, some hail, and uh, enough wind shear that an isolated tornado also can't be ruled out. So here's a look at our latest in-house model 
showing, of course, a dry start to the day. Blistering sunshine for the midday and afternoon. Now, we're going to pause this late in the afternoon, say about 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Uh, the modeling would suggest that we at least have the possibility of a couple of gusty storms around. Now, this idea is not shared right now by all the short-range modeling. The modeling did really badly, by the way, last evening with the activity uh, that we had overhead. So, you know, it's hard to trust the modeling a lot in uh, these kinds of situations, even several hours ahead of time. The gusty storms we had last evening were not well advertised by the modeling as late in the day as three or four in the afternoon. They were pretty clueless. But that being said, um, this, is, this solution is a possibility for the end of the afternoon into tomorrow evening. I think we'll largely see a, a pretty quiet period then mid to late evening. Modeling is not showing a lot for the overnight, but some of the other modeling is. I think as long as this front is lurking just to our north, we're gonna have that possibility of some showers and some thunderstorms taking us into at least the first part of the afternoon on Saturday. Now, this is kind of a tricky forecast on Saturday because there's different model solutions as far as the timing of our front slipping in from the north. A faster front means, yeah, we're in great shape late in the afternoon into the evening for Y Live in Youngstown. A slower solution would mean that we're going to have to allow for some showers and storms well into the afternoon. But even that slower solution would suggest, you know, at this point, we should be in okay shape by about 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. So stay tuned on that if you're heading to downtown Youngstown late in the afternoon, early in the evening on Saturday. Right now we're going to keep that chance of showers and storms through at least about 4 or 5 o'clock. I think by 8 o'clock or so, even a slower arrival of the front, it wouldn't be that slow. At least it looks like right now that we'd have to worry about much by about showtime Saturday evening. Either way, though, we're in great shape heading into Sunday and the first part of next week as the humidity starts to come down. The uh, day three outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, which is Saturday, does have a good chunk of Ohio and western PA, just about all of Pennsylvania, actually, in a level one risk for severe weather. So this is tricky business heading into Saturday. It's an important forecast because of uh, the volume of people that are heading downtown. Uh, we're expecting 20,000 or so in Youngstown for this, and the weather will be all important. Make sure you have downloaded the Storm Tracker 21 app so you can keep tabs on any activity. Check the latest hourly forecasts, which we'll be updating frequently from now through Saturday afternoon. This is the way the forecast looks right now. About a 40% chance of still a shower or storm around by about 5, but notice the percentages decrease rapidly as we head towards sunset. I think the dew points are going to start to come down pretty rapidly late in the day. So it's going to feel pretty different outside by 10 or 11 in the evening as people are filing out of Youngstown. Uh, compared to earlier in the day when it was pretty stifling. Boy, what a treat we have coming next week. Check out the uh, dew point trends by next week. Uh, we're talking dew points mostly in the 50s, perhaps even lower than is shown here, um, for a few days early next week. And this will mean sunny days. And with dew points this low and a clear sky, we're going to have some very comfortable nights early next week. You know, we're going to spend the next couple of nights very uncomfortably, <laughs> especially tomorrow night, uh, temperature-wise. Um, but we could see in some of the cooler nooks uh, during the first part of next week, uh, some lows 52, 53, 54 degrees. That is a rare treat and a real treat for the first couple of days of August. And again, at this point, I'm not expecting a stifling August. Um, some of the modeling is actually looking, you know, pretty cool-ish by August standards for a while in August. But we'll do an updated August outlook overall coming up early on next week. In the meantime, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. I will uh, keep you updated on what will happen uh, Friday evening and, of course, over the weekend on my social media and on our newscasts and the 21 News app.